right. The blood that Jesus shed washes our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. Amen. Yes. Therefore, after we're saved, every time we sin against God and we ask God to forgive us, there's power in that blood Amen. to forgive us of all those sins. Amen. Amen. Three levels of the ark. Well, we can go on. Say there's pitch from within and without. That's an interesting word because that word pitch in the Hebrew is mentioned 217 times. 185 times in the Bible, it's the word atonement. That's what the pitch does. It covers our sins and it cleanses our sins. That's right. And it was pitched from within. And we can go on and on. Sell us to the devil. God knew what he was doing when he built the ark. Don't let anybody fool you. Or tell you any different. And so don't ever water down the gospel. Stay strong with the word of God. Too many are watering it down now. There's not the one gospel. That's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Amen. And, and then never stop serving the Lord. Always serving. Serving until God calls you home. Serving when you can't. Serving. And let me close. You say, well, I'm too old. I can't do it. Yes, you can. If you're not dead, God's not done. Right. My son got saved out of drugs when he was 20. Out of that lifestyle. And when he got saved, he got it. Yeah. The Lord called him to preach. And he's been on fire for the Lord since the year 2000 when he got saved. That's right. He pastored two churches. He went to seminary. He's got his earned doctorate. After he went to college, he went to seminary and then got his doctorate degree in the Bible. And uh, he planted two churches. This last church he planted in Nacogdoches, Texas. They had their fifth year anniversary not long ago. The church has done so well. They've got a nice building. They bought there in the city of Nacogdoches, a prime location. And they live stream all the services. You can look him up. Life Church, L-I-F-E. Life Church, NAC, or Nacogdoches Shore. And we're here about their website and all. And, uh, man, I tell you what, when he, uh, he got saved out of that lifestyle, I'm trying to think where I was going with that. <laughs> Amen. He saved all the way, brother. He was saved all the way. Uh, no looking back. No looking back. Amen. He, and when he got it, he really got it. And uh, when he got saved, he had some community service that he had to do. East Texas Baptist University he got in trouble there. He had 66 hours to do. And so he got saved. He walked in on a Sunday afternoon in a nursing home there in Longview, Texas. Of course, when he got saved, let me tell you what he did. Nobody had to preach to him. Nobody had to tell him this. When he got saved, he knew he had to make a change. He went back to where he was staying at, looked in the mirror under the bathroom. He pulled out his earrings. He pulled his breeches up from his knees to his waist. Amen? Amen. 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 He shaved his goatee. Some of you got a goatee. Nothing wrong with goatee. But he would tell you that in his lifestyle, he wanted to get rid of everything that reminded him of his partying days, his life. Shaved his goatee. About every shirt he had had marijuana seed burns in it. And he went to the Goodwill. We just started this faith, living by faith. We didn't have anything. He knew that. And we didn't have a salary coming in or anything else. We were living by the goodness and the grace of God's people. And he went to Goodwill in Longview, Texas, and bought five khaki pants like I got on for a dollar piece and five long sleeve button up dress shirts. And he went in that Sunday afternoon to. Uh, Mercy home to see if he could do some community service hours. And when he walked in, they were gathered up in the activity room in the dining hall to have a service. And they hadn't had a preacher in three or four weeks. And that activity director looked around and saw him coming. And the radio in face, he said, she said, thank God we've got a preacher this afternoon. <laughs> he turned around and looked to see who was behind him. <laughs> he went preaching. And she said, sir, why are you here? He said, well, I'm here to see if I can do some good community service to I've got a bunch of hours. And she said, I tell you what, son, we had in there preaching two or three weeks. He said, here's a Sunday school coordinator. 
So if you could read that to these residents here that want to preach her so bad, if you could just read a lesson to them. She said, I'll give you all 66 hours right now this afternoon. Hmm. Sign off to it. That's what he did. And for the next nine months, he went every Sunday preaching. I told him right there in that nursing home. You see, you don't get too old to be used to God. I'll tell you why. He was preaching there his third Sunday. He didn't know anything about preaching. He just knew what his daddy did. So all he did was get up there and holler and scream in that nursing home. And he knew about what God had done for him. And there was a hell that everybody was going to unless they gave their life to Jesus. Do y'all believe in hell? Amen. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Hell is not just as sure as heaven is. Heaven to gain, there's a hell to show that's why I got saved. Preacher preached on hell that night. And I didn't want to go to hell. And I found out I didn't have to. And so he preached on hell to old folks in the nursing homes. And there was a 96 year old woman bedridden down the hall. She turned her light on her bed. And her light came on outside the hall by her door. The nurses ran in there. And she said, Who is that down there preaching? She said, can you sit him down here when he gets through? She was Catholic. My son went down there. She said, you're talking about you can know you go to heaven and not go to hell. She said, I've never heard anything like that about hell. She said, I know what purgatory is and somebody can buy my way out, pay my way and pray my way out. But you talk like there's just heaven and hell. She says, can you help me where I know I can go to heaven? And right there she got saved. Amen. Now that's the beginning of a great story. That's right. And then she began to cry. And uh, my son and the nurses said that they thought she was crying tears of joy. But she was sorrowful. And my son said, well, ma'am, he called her by name, 96 years old, said, ma'am, being saved is a thing to be glad about. She said, oh, I know I'm glad. I'm, I'm so glad. She said, but I'm sad. And she said, because all of my life I've wasted and I'm too old to do anything for God now. And I guess it was the Holy Spirit. My son didn't have much wisdom. He just got saved not long before. But he was quick on his feet as he said the Spirit made him say this. He said he noticed that she had a telephone on her nightstand next to her bed. And uh, he said, ma'am, do you talk on the phone? She said, I do. Do you have family around Longview, Marshall? She said, I do. You can do something for God. You can get on your phone this week and invite all of your family to our service next Sunday down here in that too. And when my son showed up that next Sunday, 19 of her family members were gathered in there and they had rolled her bed down there. Praise God. Amen. 11 of them got saved. Amen. Woo! Don't Praise tell me it won't happen. Don't ever get over getting saved. Don't ever water down the gospel. It's just as real today as it ever was. And keep serving the gospel. Is good. We might is. Well, I had a good sermon on Noah. But I never got there, thank the Lord. I believe the Lord allowed us to hear what He wanted us to hear tonight. I know this. That God is a God of another chance. And how many chances did He give mankind for allowing Methuselah to live nearly a thousand years? Because when Methuselah would be taken out of this world, the flood was coming. God was going to destroy the judgment. But still, man would not return to God. You can return to God right now tonight. Young people, listen. This church loves you. And you know that. They want to provide for you on Wednesday nights where you can hear about Jesus. Where you can be taught. Where you can be involved in the importance of life. Loving God and loving each other. But not just young people. There's an old man, guys, back there on the back row that gave his life to Jesus this week. He's an older man on oxygen. I thank the Lord that he didn't wait too late. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. So it's the age. 
when you understand that you die without him and go to hell, and you better make arrangements to go to heaven and receive Jesus. God loved you. He gave a son. Now listen to me very carefully now. I'm not going to manipulate, maneuver, pressure anybody to make a decision, right? Because I want to be your decision, so but what I am going to do, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It says that he was a perfect man. That was an integrity. When he started living for God. He was, he was a man of integrity in his character. People, In other words, what people saw in public, he did in private. He was the real deal. But also said that he walked with God. You've got to be alive to walk. Dead men don't walk. You've got to be alive. Said that God said. He didn't hear the voice from Brigham Young. He didn't hear the voice from Joseph Smith. He didn't hear the voice from Muhammad. He didn't hear the voice from Harry Krishna or any other Harry. He heard God say. That's the only voice you can listen to. That's the only voice. And God said tonight that whoever, whosoever, whoever will call upon me shall be saved. If you'd like to know Jesus tonight, in a moment we're all going to stand. And in a moment, Miss Karen on the piano is going to play. Brother Dan, Brother Dan, you back away from that microphone because if anybody comes, we won't be able to hear them. Most importantly, amen. Will you sing softly. Yes, yourself. And he begins to sing. Young people, older folks, anybody here tonight, you need to ask Jesus in your heart. You come down here to Brother John. We've got some others of these ladies and these men that work, sacrifice, and volunteer to work with all the young people. They can be down here too, and they'll talk with you. We want to do that as we close tonight. So let's all stand together with our head bowed. Gary's going to play. Dad's going to sing very softly.